Boy Tone Show too, and I'm just gonna listen to this hogwash that Hillary Clinton is about to tell this black mother after she explains to them that she lives in Philadelphia and she has four black children, three of them are boys, one of them is a girl, and she's afraid that they're going to go out and get shot by the police, even though they follow the rules. I'm gonna listen to some of what this woman says, then I'll listen to Hillary Clinton's lies, and we'll go from there. Hey, I am um, piggyback off of the gun violence. Hi, my name is Ernie, and I am a mother of three black African-American boys. And my twins are 18, and my son is 26. Mm -hmm. And for them to leave the house, I'm a big supporter of Black Lives Matter. Well, and for them, and I also have a daughter. So the reality of a mom with all these children yeah, in the community, in the, in the heart of Philadelphia, doing so many things, the gun violence is real for me as a mother. Indeed. Because they can walk out just doing their own thing, minding their business, doing quality of life things, and get pulled over by the police. Right. The policing policies have to stop. It has to be changed. It has to be changed to where the fact that if you have productive children doing productive things and not feel safe, if they're going to just drive over the bridge to Jersey, get pulled over with their hands up in the air, and still get shot. Blown we away. Need policies to change because I, that's a, that's really a reality to me. What is your intake on that? Absolutely, Thanks. absolutely. You know, she's just going to say whatever we want to hear. Just like Obama. That is the reality. And how many that of us died while Obama's in office? What she is talking about is what 8, black 000. parents live with every day. I was in Charlotte on Sunday, and I was speaking at a church, and I, I said, look, I have these two absolutely wonderful grandchildren. I will never have to sit them down and tell them to be afraid to be careful. I will expect them, as she expects her kids, to be law-abiding. But that doesn't always work. Doesn't work. And therefore, we've got to do three things. Number one, those of us who aren't in her position need to empathize and understand what it's like when her sons walk out the door to go see their friends or go to school. Okay, that's true. Putting ourselves in the other's shoes goes a long way in a country as diverse as ours to getting people to really, you know, feel and, and experience what that is like. Secondly, we've got to do more to reform the criminal justice system. There are so many good, honorable police officers. They need our support. They need our backing. Can't tell who's who, though, Hillary. We can't and tell. at the same time, we have to help them get the kind of training and standards that they're looking for to really make it more, uh, more possible to have every police officer know how to de-escalate situations. I don't care you know, about it that. Is, it is scary. And I, and I, I met with a group of young African American men after church in Charlotte, yeah, and I'm one of the young men, it was so impressive, he's a, he's a barber, and he started a program bringing young African Americans together with local police, so they could get to know each other and break down some of the misunderstanding. And he said, as part of the training, he went to one of the simulating training experiences that police officers get. And he said it was eye-opening because the first time he was part of a stop, he was a man in the driver's seat, a woman in the passenger seat, and he was part of the police stop as an observer, and he goes up to the window and says, you know, show me your hands, and the man put his hands up, and then his role was to say, okay, step out now. And the woman picked up a gun from the other side of the seat and shot him. Okay, I'm going to stop right also... there. That situation you're talking about is not what's happening, Hillary. That's not what's happening. We're talking about people who are being shot and have done nothing. And their hands are already in the air. They're by themselves. They're apparently no threat whatsoever on any level. They're not a threat. And they're surrounded by police, and then they get blown away. 
Okay, that's what we're talking about here. Baby. We're not talking about people who are a potential threat and you don't know if they're a threat. We're talking about people who are clearly on every single level not a threat. They are law-abiding citizens. We're not talking about people who uh, get stopped and you don't know if they're a threat or not. Yeah, that's a situation police have to deal with every day. We're not talking about that. We talking about Philando Castillo, uh, who who did what he was supposed to. He had a license to carry a gun. He reached for his wallet like he was told to. He obeyed everything the officer said, and he got shot and killed in front of his woman and his. Uh, it wasn't his child, but the the woman, his woman's little girl, which basically is his child. He's taking care of her. I mean, this four or five year old saw this man get blown away dead. For absolutely nothing, he followed the law. There's no, there was no sneak in it. And I, look, people are always trying to whitewash stuff. They're always trying to uh, 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 put it, things into the category to make these officers seem like uh, there was possible threats. No, these officers are murderers. These officers, uh, listen. The officer who killed Mike Brown, Darren Wilson, he is a murderer. That is it. You know what I'm saying? The officer who killed Tamir Rice, they already knew he was a gypsy cop, which means they go from one precinct to the other. See, if they do something wrong in one precinct, they can leave there and just go to the next county and be an officer. That's how this crooked system is. That's something that they need to stop. The guy who shot Tamir Rice had already had problems in the and his supervisor said in uh, and he wrote it down that he knows that he is not stable and should not be able to carry a gun. Why did he go out and kill Tamir Rice within two seconds? See, they have a buddy system that is not going to be stopped. And Hillary Clinton is going to be just like Donald Trump, is going to be just like uh, President Obama. They are not going to be able to stop that system. Why? Because they'll get their heads blown off. And that's just that. You try to stop that system and they're going to JFK you. Trust and believe. They already tried to kill Obama. Okay. Let's let's quit playing around and acting like these politicians have some kind of control over what these officers are doing. They don't. These officers are operating at a whole different level. OK, and no politician is going to tell them what to do. We can make up laws all day. These officers break the law every day. They break the law. They are more criminal than the criminals. OK, and when you get to talking about good cops, we always want to bring this in. Well, the good cops ain't killing people. OK, we're not worried about the good cops. We're not talking about the good cops. We don't know the good cops. OK, we know what's blasted all over the airways, blasts all over the news. We know the bad cops. You know what I'm saying? I still got scars on my body from bad cops. I don't have any scars on my body from good cops, okay? We're not, we not talking about the good cops. We all want to celebrate the good cops. Fine. Fine and well. Celebrate the good cops. I don't have a problem with that. But quit acting like, oh, oh, you know what? We're just going to uh, just put them both together in the good and the bad cops. And, you know, there just has to be some bad cops. So I don't worry about it. Philando Castillo, he wasn't living his life. He wasn't doing nothing important anyway. He was just taking care of a woman and her child. That's all. You know what I'm saying? The other guy was just selling, you know, CDs, minding his business. And he got blown away by two cops who pretty much told a lie on him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can go all the way back to Johnny Gamage. I mean, if you don't know the story about what happened to him up in Bluefield, Pittsburgh, I mean, they crushed his neck from behind. Listen, they stopped Johnny Gamage for no reason at all, other than he was driving a nice car and he was a black man. And I've been in Bloomfield. I'm from Pittsburgh, okay? And it's a, it's a half-decent area where black and white people live, all right? And he was driving at night. They stopped him, got him out of his car, and they were beating him so bad. He was like, what did I do? He was pleading for his life. He's like, I'm only 31. Come to find out that one of his relatives was a Pittsburgh Steeler, and that was the car he was driving. 
They don't care who you are. They don't care who you're related to. And LeBron James has a legitimate gripe when he says, I'm afraid that my son is going to be driving and he'll get killed by these cops. It's on a whole different level. It has nothing to do with these politicians. Nothing at all. These cops are going to kill because they can, because they're told to. This is why, you know, when you take officers and you try to introduce them to regular people, okay, fine. You introduce some, you know, potentially good or bad cops to people. Fine. Now we know who the potentially good or bad cop is, but we don't know what they really are until we get in the situation. They blow somebody's child away. I just, I would just wish they would, I wish they would go after the cops who we already know and have done something. These cops are on paid leave or they're not on the force anymore. Darren Wilson ended up with $250,000. Why don't you go after some of these murderers who's already done stuff? You don't hear none of them saying that. Go after those people. We know who's done what. We ha They're all on the internet. We have a list of people who they murdered. And, 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 and then you have this fake court system. Go after the court system. Go after the judges. Go after the prosecutors. Go after all them. Get all them and remove all them or put them in jail for accessory to murder. And go after the police officer who was acquitted and drag his ass out of his nice house and throw him in jail for the rest of his life. I want to hear a politician say that. You're not going to hear that because they're all puppets. It's your boy Tone Till, too.